Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out BiQ's Raspberry Pi Pad 5. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I do want to thank BiQ for sending this over to me, and it is something that I have requested to review because I thought this was a very interesting product. Everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below, so let's begin. What makes this product a little bit different from any other 5-inch Raspberry Pi screens that you have seen? If you flip to the back, this module right here, the CM4. Now, this screen has everything you need built onto it to operate a Raspberry Pi, but at a very low profile. So I think all in all, this is only 19 millimeters tall just because the ethernet port is the biggest of them all. But ultimately, this is a very small, thin screen. Originally, this is actually developed for BiQ's 3D printer lineup, so they could actually install some sort of compute unit so they could actually run their 3D printers much like how Octopi would run it. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna be developing some software to pair this up with their 3D printers. And it also has the ability to support CAN bus, which is like a low level serial communication between this screen and to their 3D printers. Now I have the same thought because I actually wanted to build one of these screens for an OctoPi. Since this screen still has the CSI exposed, much like a Raspberry Pi does, I could hook up a 16 megapixel autofocus camera on here and have really good time lapse. Now let's talk about the connections a little bit in the back. First, we have the module where we would stick in the CM4. Now it does come with four screw holes. Once you install the CM4, it actually fits in there very snug, so it won't be falling out unless you kind of like drop it or something like that. Even then, I don't think it's gonna fall out. So while it does have the four screws, it's not really needed, and that's where the CM4 module goes. To go around the connections a bit in the back, uh, first, we're gonna start off with the real-time clock battery. This does have real-time clock built in, so all you need to do is install a battery. I don't know what model that is. That is the CR something, but then you have the USB-C connector for power input and then a switcher. Now this switch actually allows you to go from USB host mode to CAN bus mode. So you can switch it back and forth. Normally you would just switch it into a position where you would just use it as an OTG. Then you have your CSI uh, port for your camera modules or whatnot. Full-size HDMI, uh, USB 2.0, SD card slot in case your CM4 does not have uh, EMMC. Then two more USBs off to the side. Then you have the brightness and screen rotation. And then you still have the 40 pin GPIO on this. Going around that side, you have a full size ethernet port. And that is it for all the connections. Now there is two things that you need to know on this board. There is an actual master reset button, which is this little button right here. And then there's also these dip switches that you have to change around in order to enable CAN bus mode or if you wanna flash to the CM4 from this screen. Now switching these two dip switches upward will allow you to go into bootloader mode, which will allow you to flash the firmware on here. Just remember to switch it back when you're about to boot it up. And that is about it for all the connections. So it does have everything you need on a Raspberry Pi to get this going. Um, it does use a DSi interface, so it actually doesn't use HDMI. It, has, it uses the DSi similar to what you would find on a Raspberry Pi 7 screen. So you do need to install drivers to get this going, which in their manual, they do have um, a link leading to their GitHub that will download the TDO which you can just put into your boot folder and it'll boot the drivers up. With the drivers, you will also get the touch screen on this and the display. So the first time you boot up, if you don't see anything, that is fine. That's because the drivers are missing and you could either load it in when you're preloading the firmware on here or you could load it in after you boot it up for the first time when you connect it to an HDMI device. Now this screen has a resolution of 800 by 480. It does not include speakers but it also does support higher resolution. It will still scale it down to 800 by 480. Now this screen is also very bright, but it is not software controlled for the brightness. When this goes into screensaver mode or when your CM4 does go into sleep mode or turns off the display, it does have this obnoxious rainbow color that stays running. Uh, that's due to the screen, not because my Raspberry Pi is running those colors. So I don't know how to turn that off yet. And it doesn't include speakers on this screen. So if you do want to pair this up to some sort of speakers, you will need to use some sort of Bluetooth because it doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio out. Now, since this is such low profile, you can actually fit it into one of these controllers and turn this into some sort of like handheld gaming device. It's much like you see what right over here. It does work pretty well and fits right in there if you want. The touchscreen is not bad, but like Raspberry Pi operating system is not really built for touchscreens, so it doesn't operate well because the buttons are so small and everything for the Raspberry Pi OS. But if you install Android on this or something that is touchscreen worthy, 
it should work really well. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I do want to turn this into an Octopi device so I can hook it up to my 3D printers and have really cool time lapse with a 16 megapixel camera. But other ideas that come to mind is turning this into a weather station. So it's all inclusive. You just have to build a case for it and then you could hang it basically anywhere or HDMI capture device with a monitor, meaning I want to hook up um, the CSI HDMI, something like this module where you could capture HDMI signals, turn this into a HDMI monitor or a capture device. That's another idea I had for this. My plans is to try this out with Octopi, see where it takes me, if I want to keep it or not, because Octopi does have a GUI and you could actually really use the GUI interface to control your uh, 3D printers. Or if I want, I might want to turn this into a small little HDMI monitor with the CSI HDMI and turn it into a quick capture device. Or ultimately I could turn this into a handheld gaming device. So ultimately at the end, what I do really like about this device is that it is very low profile and it supports the CM4. Now I rather prefer the CM4 over the Raspberry Pi due to the fact that it has built-in eMMC, which is a lot more reliable than using SD cards and a lot faster. So even though you could get a five inch screen similar to this that you could stick in a Raspberry Pi 4 on, um, the benefits is the eMMC. Anyway, that is it for me guys. If you guys have any questions about this screen, let me know down in the comments below. I will be doing the Octopi and possibly that HDMI monitor device I want to build on this to see how that works. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification icon. And as I say my nerd cave, heck till it hurts.